Right, uh, hi guys. Today we are going to be talking about The Cross and the Curse by Matthew Harfey, which is the second book in his sort of early Anglo-Saxon historical fiction series called The Bernicia Chronicles. So yeah, following on from the excellent first book in the series, which is called uh, The Serpent Sword, uh, the first act of this one is basically about dealing with the continuing threat of Cadwallon and his Welsh host who are like like his war host who are roaming the countryside with impunity. So the new king of Benicia, the uh, charismatic uh, Oswald, he summons all of his warriors and leads, including our main protagonist, Beerbrand, and uh, he leads them on a daring night attack against the Welsh. So following his exploits in this battle, Beerbrand is rewarded by Oswald with some land and various things, and also uh, Oswald entrusts him with further missions that put him into some pretty dark situations that really test his character to the absolute limit. And that's the, that's the book, basically. So, uh, is it any good? Well, yes, absolutely it is. Uh, even better than the first book in the series, I thought. And yeah, there were an awful lot of good points to this novel, actually. The characters were really well written, in my opinion. Beerbrand, in particular, was fleshed out very well. You know, in one sense, he's your sort of stereotypical, strong warrior figure that you get in this type of historical action book. But if you dig a little bit deeper, he's actually a very conflicted character. You know, he lives in a society that values strength and values violence. But he struggles to uh, control himself in situations where that's required. And his sort of actions and reactions in these type of situations are often detrimental to him. Uh, and, they, and they usually, you know, that's what really progresses the plot. Uh, he's always sort of grappling with his anger. And Harfi uh, shows how this affects his psyche in, in negative ways. You know, I think Beerbrand does somehow manage to remain a sympathetic figure. Even though he's committing all kinds of like atrocious acts of you know violence to people, even to his friends, you know, and I think uh, that that is really a testament to how Harfi portrays uh, his inner struggles like really deftly. You got other characters, you know, um, the uh, the young monk Conrad. His uh, character arc is really satisfying as he kind of has to struggle with loneliness and struggling to be accepted. You know, you've got uh, Oswald, uh, interesting character. Akanan is uh, an interesting character. They've all got parts to play. Um, yeah, and uh, in terms of plot, I think the, um, the sort of grander historical narrative is mixed in seamlessly with uh with Beerbrand's personal story and they both have uh an impact on each other rather than just being two separate but concurrent stories if you, you see what i mean and there were a couple of scenes that i did find uh, particularly uh, affecting you know they really uh, hit those emotional beats uh, but uh, but before I uh, go into them, spoiler warning for uh, for the for the next couple of sentences. So yeah, I mean I thought there was uh, tons of emotional impact when Beerbrand's wife Suniva dies, and the effect that that has on Beerbrand is pretty stark. Uh, also the the hall burning that happens at the end is a pretty like dark moment that Beerbrand has sunk to then it's not something that you'd expect really from your your typical hero i think uh, so yeah right major spoilers over i guess um but yeah, I thought the dark tone that uh, Harfie had in the first novel is carried over into this one really well. And as I said in my review of the first book, I think that's a good representation of the brutality and the, the lawlessness of this time period, you know, this historical period. And um, I also thought that some of, some of the minor complaints that I did have about the first novel, particularly with regards to the writing style, uh, I thought they were addressed in this one. You know, there's much less uh, telling as opposed to showing, uh, you know, by which I mean that, uh, like, character elements and plot points are shown through action and dialogue rather than just being, you know, directly told to the reader through description. 
Uh, but I also thought that the the descriptive sections, you know, when you're describing setting or whatever, um, were much improved as well. You know, it definitely seems like Harfi is maturing as a writer in this second book in the series. You know, I particularly enjoyed some of the sort of uh, euphemistic language that he uses for various things. Uh, for example, he, there's one point where he calls blood slaughtered Jew. There's another point where he calls death. Uh, sword sleep and I think this is this is very reminiscent of the type of phrasing that you would find in something like Beowulf you know an Anglo-Saxon poem and it really added uh, just an extra layer of authenticity to the writing that that goes uh, you know above and beyond what is obviously a high level of uh, historical research that, that Harfie has done for this book. Uh, now the only thing I'd really say uh, in terms of criticism is that I think Harfi is definitely more comfortable writing uh, his male characters than his female ones. You know, the female characters, of which there's not that many, um, they seem, they're a bit flat, they're a bit one dimensional, in my opinion. I mean, you know, the, the relationship between Beerbrand and Suniva is, I think, is portrayed very well, um, but she is just a bit flat as a character herself. Um, for me, but yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's my only gripe really with it, and and certainly some of the gripes that I had from the last book, which were only minor anyway, um, have definitely been dealt with in this one. And I overall, I very much enjoyed this. I sort of think this was a really excellent read. So yeah, uh, the Cross and the Curse by Matthew Harfie, second book in the Benicia Chronicles series. I think anyone who likes um, The Last Kingdom will certainly like this, you know, Bernard Cornwell's Last Kingdom series. Or anyone who just likes, you know, good historical adventure. Anyone who's interested in the Anglo-Saxon time period, I think, will certainly enjoy it. And for me, I am uh, very happy to have discovered and carried on with this series now. I'm definitely going to be reading the th uh, third book in this series very soon. Um, so, yeah, I'll put up a review of that when, I, when I've got round to it. Um, yeah, highly recommended stuff. Goodbye.